In this video, you'll learn the following things. How to set up a new DevExtreme ASP.NET Core project by using the DevExtreme project template. Include XPO, the ORM tool from DevExpress, and scaffold the model classes for the Dev AV sample database that comes with our demos. And how to use our powerful scaffolding tools to generate a web API controller, which supports CRUD operations, and also how to insert a DevExtreme data grid in a Razor page. Let's start a new project by hitting Control Shift N in Visual Studio. We'll select DevExtreme ASP.NET Core application and click Next. I'll name the project DevAVXPO and click Create. We can select the look and feel of our application. The DevExtreme project template can provide you with a bootstrap-based application, or it can provide you with a material design-based application. Let's choose Bootstrap and click Create. Once the wizard has completed its job, we can run the generated app to see what it looks like. Before we can insert a DevExtreme data grid, we need to configure the app to use XPO, and we need to scaffold the models from the DevAV database. XPO also comes with some design time features, even with ASP.NET Core. Let's first open the Package Manager console and use the install package method. Once XPO has been added, let's quickly compile the project so we know everything is downloaded and available. I'm going to create a subfolder in the Models folder called XPO. Next, let's right-click on the folder and select New Item. Now I can select the DevExpress ORM Data Model Wizard. Once the wizard pops up, I select Map to an existing database and click Next. Now it will ask me the connection parameters for the database. I'll fill them in accordingly to my configuration and make sure I tick the Save This Connection to the Configuration File box and hit Next. The next step allows me to select all tables and fields that I want to scaffold. I will leave the default selection as is and hit Next. Now I can make some changes to the code which will be generated. The first thing I do is add a prefix XP to the class names so I can identify the XPO classes when coding. I'll also change the nullable behavior to by underlying type. I'll also check that the create partial declarations for manual editing is ticked and click finish. The wizard now creates a visual representation of the database. We can see this by opening devav.xpo. What you see is the complete diagram including all relationships and a number of hints in yellow boxes mostly about skipping the generation of index file definitions because the apply on key fields. Let's click on the design surface of the diagram and check the properties. There are a couple of things we want to change. Put generate JSON serializer contract to false if you're using .NET Core. For .NET Framework MVC, it should be left to true. Optionally, change the namespace of the generated classes. I'll leave it to default. If we now save the devav.xpo file, the diagram will be rendered out as XPO model classes. What you see is that for every entity, there is a .cs file with a partial class and a designer.cs file, which holds the other partial class definition. The CS file can be used to code additional things in an XPO entity, while the designer.cs file should not be modified since this could be overridden if something changes in the devav.xpo diagram file. Let's build the application to see that everything is available. Once it's finished, we can start using the scaffolding tools to get a DevExtreme grid into our application. Go to the Pages folder and open index.cshtml. Here, I'll remove the sample data grid. Right-click with the mouse and select Insert DevExtreme Control here. Once the wizard appears, we can select Data Grid on the Control tab and click Next. On the Data Binding tab, we can select our scaffolded data model, which will be DevAV. Next, we select the model class we want to display in the data grid, which will be Products. 
Last on this tab, we need to select a web API controller where the data grid will connect to for its data. We'll create a new one. On the Settings tab, we can select the columns that we want to have in the grid, and we can specify whether we want to enable CRUD operations on the grid as well. Once I click Add, the wizard will generate a web API controller with all the appropriate action methods depending on the boxes I've checked. And it also configures a data grid inside my Razor page with all the options I've selected in the wizard. All selected items from the wizard are configured correctly. Here's our data grid. It has all the CRUD operations available. And it also has the controller configured. If I open the XP products controller, you'll see that the scaffold has created some code for us. If we run the application now, we see a data grid connecting to the web API controller to process the product's data on the server. Users can edit and delete grid records. And that's it for this video. To learn more about DevExtreme, you can watch more videos from our playlist or read the documentation on our website. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified anytime we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.